Hey, it's Rainiacs, Mel the Train Shooter, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. Now, in this Let's Make, what we're going to be doing is looking at sort of modern, urban, apocalypse sort of scatter. We sort of just finished off a few videos after the Turf War Z stuff with the zombie apocalypse. And with that in mind, I want to do some street scatter. So we're going to be looking at pallets, we're going to be looking at bin bags, and we're going to be looking at cardboard boxes. Typical street scatter. So with that in mind, let's hit the bench, eh? Come on. Making pallets is pretty easy, yeah? You only need two core building materials. First off, coffee stirrers. Yeah, and these aren't lollipop sticks, they are the coffee stirrers you get from like Starbucks and Costa and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and then on top of that, a little bit of balsa wood. Yeah, five mils probably best for what you're looking for. If you can't get balsa wood, keep your eyes open when you're out uh, around craft shops and toy shops for uh, kiddies, bracelet building boxes, you know, sort of like the, the packs with lots of little beads in and some string that kids can make bracelets from. Quite often they'll have square beads in those that are perfect. I just couldn't find any today to show you. Yeah, so it is one of those, if you see it, grab it guys. So you've got your coffee stirrers, you've got a bit of balsa wood. Next off you're going to need some scissors, yeah. Good pair of ki kitchen scissors is the best way of cutting this stuff. Yeah, it gives the cleanest cut. Yeah, and what you're going to be doing is, you're going to be cutting these, and you need, yeah, to cut them. I work, oof, <laughs> that disappeared. <laughs> yeah, hold on to it. Yeah, it's all right, I've already made some. You want to cut them for it to be two inches wide. Yeah, I find two inches is the best for pallets for 28 mil. Obviously, if you're doing different scales, scale your materials appropriately. Yeah, you're going to need 12 per pallet, okay? So once you've cut out 12 of your two inch strips, you're gonna get what? Two out of each, so you're gonna need six coffee stirrers per pallet. Yeah, it's time to cut the balsa wood. Now when it comes down to the balsa wood, best thing for cutting balsa wood is a jeweler's saw or a diamond saw. Yeah, incredibly fine teeth. Yeah, used for modeling. It gives a really nice cut and doesn't splinter it. But be careful, really sharp. Yeah, this will go through your skin like you won't believe, so cut carefully. And the trick is, it's a little bit difficult to show you because of hands and stuff like that, but lay your balsa wood over your strip, okay? So it's flat at one end, and then you've got your cut line perfect. So if I move back there, it might be a bit awkward. This isn't the best way of doing it. Yeah, but you can simply cut through. Now, when you cut through, you make your little squares, just like that. Okay, and you're not gonna place them cut end to cut end on your piece. What you're gonna do is, with a little bit of glue, I'm using a gel super glue just because it's quicker. You can use PVA, yeah, but gel super glue just fixes them, gets them down. When you glue them down, what you need to do is you need to glue them, yeah, so that they're side on, okay? Not cut end on, side on. That means that if you use the same piece of balsa wood, all your little blocks will be the same size. All your little blocks will be the same size. If you go sort of cut end on, you're relying on you being perfect with your cutting. So just go side on, okay? And what you've ended up with is, once you've gone on, you need to glue them like that. Three blocks per two strips, and you end up with the sides. Now these are gonna be the runs of the, what you call it, of the pallet. Yeah, so I've got three of them here. I've already done, so you're not watching me glue these to me fingers. Uh, right, and all I'm going to do is, on my 2 inch by 2 inch square, that happens to be my cutting mat, I'm going to lay them down, yeah, just like that, just like they would in a standard pallet, and then, with my spare sticks, okay, I'm just going to put a couple of blobs of glue, yeah, first ones I'm going to do are the outer ones, and I'm just going to get those set to get it fixed as a piece. Then I'll lay the middle ones in as I do. Slightly off camera there, but you're getting what I'm doing, yeah? So, sticks, and then let's lay, lay our blobs down, yeah? And there we go, guys. The next job I need to do is just lay in the middle strips. I've got these here. Yeah, and I'm not going to show you how to glue them in. You can see how I'm gluing in, so I'll skip forward on that. I'll see you in a sec. And there you go guys, all dry, yeah? 
and I didn't even glue any bits to my fingers for once. Huh, I count that as a win. Right, now once it's all dry, unless you are the perfect modeler, you will have bits of overhang and stuff like that. So it's time to clean them up. And to do this, dead simple. Get your hobby clippers and just come along and just little snips. Yeah? As well as little snips and just cleaning up any bits sort of overhangs, yeah. What you can, oh, careful both. What you can do is also a little bit of fine grit sandpaper. I think this is 150 grit, yeah. And then all I'm going to do is on the edges, come along, just sand them down, yeah. And that will give you a lovely smooth edge. So I'm just going to trim these up, clip these up, and then they'll be ready for painting. Now we've covered painting before on the channel, lots and painting wood. I should do a video on painting wood and different techniques as a reference video. Let me know if you'd want that, yeah. But in the meantime, yeah, we could paint this with a brown, give it a wash, give it a dry brush with a cream, that sort of stuff. But I'm going to go a bit different. After I've cleaned it up, I'm going to give it a spray with, what do you call it, with blue primer, yeah. And I'm going to do a little, something a little bit different. So, I'm going to get this cleaned up, I'm going to give it a spray, I'll be back in a sec. So, all cleaned up and primed and doesn't it look great? Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Now, next job is I do need to put a little bit of a wash on this. Yeah, just a little sort of brown wash. Just bring out the shadows and so it's not just matte blue. But before I do, I've noticed a lot of white palettes I've seen have sort of white writing on them. So what I've got here is a brush. I've got a tiny little bit of white acrylic on there. And all I'm going to do is wash my steady hands. Yeah. Let's come along. Let's put it on the flat bits. Yeah. I'm just going to. Yeah, put a little bit on. Yeah, it's a bit messy. It's a lot messy, but it just breaks it up. I'll do it this on the other side, yeah, and then we'll come back when it's ready for a wash. Right, that's me painting done, it's all dry, and I did a lot better on that side, didn't I, <laughs> than that side. Okay, next job is I just want to weather it up a little bit. Okay, just add a little bit of contrast into it. So what I've got is, I've got a bit of burnt umber, yeah, a little bit of water, yeah, I mixed up a really thin wash, and then it's just a matter of getting my brush, yeah, and just giving it a quick coat over. Yeah, like I say, when, you, when you're putting it on, you're not trying to do that much on it. What you want is you want the brown to sort of catch in the edges, yeah, and give it a bit of shadow and in the creases. You're not trying to stain it or make it brown, you know what I mean? So, a little bit of a wash, and then just brush it over. Yeah, so I'm going to get that done, and I'll bring it back once it's all done, guys. So that's our wash done and look beautiful. Yeah, little palette for you. Dead simple, dead easy. Yeah, cocktail stir is a bit of balsa, a bit of primer and a bit of washing. That's all it took. And obviously a bit of glue. Right, uh, shall we crack on? Now bin bags have to be the by far the easiest thing to make because we make them out of bin bags. <laughs> yeah, it's as simple as that. Now when you're looking for your bin bags to make your bin bags out of, your miniature bin bags, yeah, you want the cheap and shiny ones. Yeah, the really good ones, the heavy duty ones that have a matte finish don't look right as miniature ones. So what I've done is, I've got a bin bag, yeah, and then if you can see, I've savaged some holes in it and I've ended up with these. Yeah, little squares. Now these are, I would say, coming on three inches by three inches. And these are actual double layers, yeah? So when I've, I've laid the bin bag out and I've cut it, yeah, cut my squares out, I've taken both sides of the bin bag, yeah? So if I bring it up, you can see how oh, there's actually two layers there. And the reason I've done that is because it's much more opaque, okay? It's much darker as two layers, it's tougher. And the sort of, the general static of them holds them together really well, okay? So the next thing is, we've got our bin bag material for our bin bags, now we need to put something in it. Now you could put rubbish and that sort of stuff, but you know, this miniature world. We've got a couple of options, yeah? Green stuff, Milliput, Das Modeling Putty, Blue Tack, my preference, Pebbles. 
okay and specifically these are the ones that I took out of my uh, what you call it my ballast mix when I was drying it and sieving it to get my ground materials you know the ones that don't look very natural and that's because they're sea pebbles seashore pebbles or water pebbles basically they've been smoothed off so they've got no real sharp edges to cut the actual plastic the other reason I like these is one they've got a quite nice sort of baggy shape to them Second, you get sort of half pieces, and they're great for sitting flat, okay? Now, the other benefit of using pebbles over the putties and that sort of stuff is that if you use the pebbles, they've got a bit more weight to them, you know what I mean? Okay, so they tend to sort of stand up to, you know, the work better. Now, to, to do it, it is really simple, and I'm going to show you two ways. Yeah, I'm going to get my pebble, yeah, I'm going to put it in, I'm just going to pick up all my bits. Yeah, and you can move your pebble around and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so you got it in. Yeah, bring up all the edges up to the top. Yeah, and try and straighten them out. Yeah, you don't want them creased until they get to the top. Yeah, when they get to the top, grip them all. Yeah, and just start twisting. Okay. Now. You can do the ones where you can tie them in knots. Yeah, so if I bring that up. Yeah. You can do the ones where you tie them in knots. I don't, okay? Uh, with this sort of stuff, if you tie them in the knots, the knots look too big. Yeah, so what I do is, I use some of this. Now this is, what you call it? This is embroidery cotton. I grab some off, what you call it, off Ali in the studio one door down yeah she's a she's a she's an embroidery artery artist yeah just beautiful stuff yeah textile worker essentially and so what i'm basically going to do is with all these cotton tie it up and then i'm just going to tie a knot in this guys and there you go knot tied next thing is grab the edges yeah if you can Sort of pull them out. This will force the knot down. Yeah. I get it all nice and looking good. And then just simply come along and with a pair of scissors we need to cut off the top bit. Get it right, both. Yeah, tweak that. Just take those little corner bits off so it doesn't look too silly. Yeah, and then take off the excess of the cotton. Yeah. And there you have it, guys. Yeah, a little miniature bin bag. That's perfectly, you can drop them around as scatter. Yeah, load of them, you, put, you can pile them up. Now, I've got a few more pieces, so I'm going to put them together and I'm going to bring them all back once I've done these, yeah? And there we have them, guys. And you'll notice one of these is not like the other, yeah? Let me bring it up. Da -da -da. Where are you? There you go, okay? A little bit different. All I did is, I used the Sainsbury's carrier bag for this one to show you something different. So there you have it, guys. Really easy bin bags, you know? You can pick them up, you can just throw them round. I'd highly recommend getting a bin bag, getting your cotton and that sort of stuff. And just banging out, say, 40 or 50 of these if you're an urban gamer. And just keep them in the tub as general scatter you can just place down. Yeah, obviously the half pebbles work really well because they actually stand rather than rolling about. Yeah, like that one. Mount tumble down. Yeah. Now, one final little tip. I highly suggest you come in and where you've got the little threads... Yeah, put a blob of, what you call it, super glue on there. Now, it's not so much of holding the knot tight, it's more about stopping the thread from slipping up off the top of the bag and the back up, bag unraveling, you know, as you're taking them in and out your tubs. Yeah, but that's as easy as it is. Bin bags from bin bags, guys. A couple of pebbles, a bit of, what you call it, thread. Yeah, and they look awesome. Right, let's crack on. Okay, the last thing for us to tackle is cardboard boxes. Now, they're a common sight as sort of street scenery, street scatter. And a bit like the bin bags are made out of bin bag, yeah, cardboard boxes are made out of card. Yeah, in this case, serial card. Don't worry about the picture, we'll sort that later. Yeah, now, I have drawn out a template here. 
It is two inches by four inches with like an extra inch on the top. And this is going to be my box and it's going to form the actual flaps of the box and all that sort of stuff. So now I've drawn it out like that, okay? What I've got to do is I've got to cut it out. So I'm going to take a blade, I'm going to take watch clip, a metal edge ruler, and I'm going to watch my fingers, because you know what I'm like, and I'm going to cut this out. So I've cut our piece out, and on top of that, yeah, I've cut down these flaps just to that bottom line. Yeah, so each of these flaps are individual, but you'll notice it's not really folding like a box. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to put some score lines on it. And what score lines will do is it'll, it'll, it'll basically guide where the cardboard folds. Now to do this, it's dead easy. All I'm gonna do is get my metal ruler, yeah, line it up on a line I need to score, and then with my blade, yeah, I'm gonna use the other side of it, yeah? So I'm not cutting with it, I'm dragging that sharp tip across the cardboard. And that scores it, and what that'll do is, if you see there, where I try and bend it, but if I try and bend that there, I get a lovely sharp bend, yeah? Without actually breaking the cardboard. Yeah, you only score it once or twice, don't keep scoring it, because you will wear through the cardboard. Now what I need to do is I need to score there, 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 along there, and along there. And once that's done, these will all be movable pieces. Right, that's all my scoring done, and you can see they're all independent pieces and they're gonna bend much easier now. I say, yeah, they are. Yeah, it's the guidelines from the scoring, it makes it much easier. Next thing I need to do is start to form the box. Now, all I need to do is roll this round, and this spare flap I'm gonna tuck into this side. Okay, and it's gonna go just like that, okay? Now, to glue it down, I've got a little bit of uh, super glue here. Now, you could use PVA if you wanted. I wouldn't recommend hot glue as it sort of forces the edges apart. The reason I prefer watch glue super glue is quite simply, one, it dries really quick. Two, when I spray paint it and I wash it and I prime it, I don't have to worry about the glue reactivating, yeah, which it does with PVA. So, hold that down, grip it, don't glue your fingers to it, Bose. Give it a little blow. Everyone enjoys that. Yeah, and then I'll come back once it's dry. Right, now that's dry, it's time to do the bottom. Okay, and for the bottom, dead simple, yeah, take two of the flaps, push them in, get in. Yeah, and then take the other two flaps at the sides, push those down, yeah. Get them fitting right first. And once you've got them fitting right, yeah, and they feel right, Pull them back out, get your super glue, and a couple of blobs on it. Yeah. And then push these down to close them. The reason I say bend them into the right position first is because you don't want to be fiddling around getting them in the right position and making sure they fit whilst you've got super glue on them. Now I'm pushing them down on the desk, and then at the same time I'm getting my finger. And I'm putting it right in the hole and pushing it right in deep, right to the bottom until I hit it. Yeah, and that's gonna go, that's gonna be nice and firm. Yeah, so that'll stick lovely. Right, those are stuck down now, and we're pretty much at the box stage. Now obviously we've got these flaps, so just bend those. Yeah. Now the next thing you need to do is it's very rare you get cardboard boxes that neat on the street. Yeah, so just grab it and give it a bit of a squeeze at the edges. Yeah, nothing too excessive, but enough just so it isn't too much of a box. Then, pull it back open again. Okay, now this is important because we need to paint this. Okay, and as I said, I use cereal back packet. It's a lot tougher than normal cardboard, but I need to paint this now. Now, you can use acrylic paints on it and that sort of stuff, but whenever I use acrylic paint on what you call it, cardboard, I always have problems because of the water in the acrylic. It soaks up, it wears down, it, it warps the cardboard and that sort of stuff. So in this case, yeah, spray primer again, a bit like the palettes, and we're going for a brown. Yeah, so I'm going to give this a spray, I'll give it a spray on the inside, and I'll give it a spray on the outside. And that'll toughen it up and give it, give us our brown look. So, I'll go do that now and I'll bring it back when it's done. So 
So that's that box all primed up and dry, yeah. Now you can take it even further with this, yeah. If you want to at this stage, now it's primed, you can sort of paint with acrylics on it and you can start to add decal, details, decals. You can watch it, you can give it a light dry brush of a cream and bring out edges and things like that. You can even get a pen and sort of write on it, yeah. Now, that's all, you know, extra little details and it's down to you to sort of add the time on if you want to do it. It is no different than any other of the techniques. Uh, next step, yeah, we need to give it a wash. Now, a wash is going to bring out some shadows. So the first thing I want to do is re-scrunch it up, yeah, and just sort of get it ready for, for washing, yeah. So, once again, I've got that brown wash that we made for the palettes, okay. Simple brush. And all I'm going to do is just give, give it a general coating, yeah? And the idea with this is that we're adding to, we're looking to add some patches onto it and get a bit of variation, because at the minute, it's very one colour, if you know what I mean. It's, it's primed, so it's all one block colour, and we need a bit of variation on there. So I'm just going to give it a quick wash with this, which should give us some patches, yeah? And then after that, I may come in with a darker one, we'll have to see. Yeah, but in the meantime, we'll just leave these be and let them dry, yeah? All right, see you in a sec. So, all washed up. Now, I have scrunched it down a bit more. Yeah, I put some wash on on the bare cardboard where I forced those flaps in. Yeah, just to get it looking a bit more realistic. Yeah, it was a little bit too bright, yeah? So I washed it back and it looks absolutely fabulous. And there you have it, guys. Yeah, cardboard box. It is as simple as that to make these. Now, obviously, you know, you've got different size cardboard box. You've seen the template. And you make cardboard boxes essentially out of cardboard. And you put them together much like cardboard boxes. So if you need any help with this, go find a cardboard box and take it apart. You'll have your template then and you can just build it off that. Yeah, just remember to scale it down, yeah? Yeah, now, obviously, with it being primed and everything, yeah, these are pretty tough. Yeah, they'll last a lot. Uh, they'll, they'll last a while, you know what I mean? So don't be worried about, you know, because they're little bits of cardboard, they're going to get knackered. They're actually really durable, okay? Right, I think the next thing we should do is, let's wrap this up, eh? So guys, there you have it. It's as easy as that. With the palettes, just look for your coffee stirrers. Remember, if you're out and about, keep an eye out for those little beads, the square ones as well. Yeah, they're excellent for making them if you can't get hold of balsa wood or you don't fancy fiddling around with it. Remember, you don't have to do them wood. You can paint them all sorts of different colours. And if you're looking for different designs, well, let's be honest, they're palettes. They're everywhere. You can find some designs, guys. Yeah, same with the cardboard boxes, different designs. Just take a look at what cardboard boxes are out. I've covered the techniques for making the boxes, so you can just apply those techniques to different designs and come up with all sorts of different shapes. But remember, you never get a pristine box on the streets so rag them up a bit. They look a lot better. And then finally, the bin bags, our pebble bin bags, yeah? Really easy to make. Uh, you might want to get better thread than I had. I grabbed some off Alley down the road, yeah, down the way. But you can see, simply tying it off. Remember that little blob of glue to stop it slipping off, yeah? It'll save you in the long run. Nothing more infuriating than your bin bags untying in your gaming box, you know what I mean? Pebbles everywhere. <laughs> yeah? My biggest suggestion for you is to tackle this as like a two evening project. Do you know what I mean? Basically, get everything, make up a load of bin bags, make up your boxes, make up your, all your pallets and that sort of stuff. Get your spray primer on, then leave them overnight, then come back and do your detailing and that sort of stuff. And with the bin bags, remember, keep an eye out for carrier bags and get some different colours. Remember, it's the variation in colours that really make these things work, rather than just a mass of black bin bags. Now, obviously, there's lots of other street scatter you can do from tyres and all sorts of stuff and bits of paper, but they're very much just find the bits out of your Lego and toy cars and that sort of stuff and, you know, put them down. It's as simple as that. You can make terrain bases and mount all this stuff on a base. It is no different than any other piece of terrain. You just get the bits, make them first, then get a base and then sort of base them up. You know what I mean? Yeah. My suggestion is make the pieces and paint them first before mounting them to the base. It will be a lot easier, especially with that spray primer. You know what I mean? 
And I'm saying you know where I mean a lot. So obviously, that's it guys. That's a little bit of the watch of, it, of some of the stuff that I wanted to cover with the Turf War Z. We've got another probably one or two videos coming up. I think one, maybe two. I haven't decided on the second yet. And then we'll be rolling into the big foreground project in a week or so's time. Looking forward to that. But in the meantime, if you've liked this video and it's helped you yet, yeah, Click a like if what you call it. If you know anyone who might find it useful, share it. And as always, if you've got something to add or something to ask, get it in the comments. Okay? I always answer my comments eventually, but if you need a direct answer, remember you can grab me on the Sunday night at QA session. Yeah, that's a live session, so you'll get your answers there. And in the meantime, guys, the final sort of shout out for the appeal. All these videos, all this, all the time to make them, it's all because of yeah, a few good folks in the community. Yeah, and it's these good folks who, you know, I appreciate what I do and want to see more of it and want to sort of help me help the community. So they put their pocket in and they throw a little bit my way. Now, whether you want to do this and whether you want to jump on Patreon, PayPal down below and just send a one-off as a thank you and help keep the lights going and the cameras rolling, or whether you want to be a little bit more consistent and just send a dollar a month for your patron, yeah, and join the, the sort of patron club. Yeah, remember, it's only a dollar a video. Yeah, you can cap it at whatever you want, so you never give me more than you were expecting to give me, no matter how many videos I produce. And it all goes to keeping this going. So, if you'd like more of this and you look forward to this and it helps you with your hobby, yeah, and you'd like to help me help the community, please consider supporting it, guys. And in the meantime, I'll see you soon, probably Thursday, with more urban scatter stuff. I'll show you when I'll get it. See you later, guys. Ta-da.